How many of you still remember how good God has been to you? Come on, can you remember that day when God took those sins away? Can you remember when he made a way out of no way, babe? Come on, put your hands together. Come on. Come on.
somebody say, this is not the end. This is the big picture. This is the main course. Look at somebody with a smile and say, it's the main course. Uh, now, for the sake of brevity, uh, we all want to have this address that the Lord gave to me for not just for the men, but for the church. And for the sake of brevity, I'm going to ask Sister Travis just to go into 1 Samuel. We read this last week, but I want to call myself doing the exegesis of this one verse, 1 Samuel 10th chapter. So he's going to tell you what verse. So maybe that's be standing. The sixth verse. At that time, the Spirit of the Lord will come mightily upon you, and you will prophesy with them, and you will feel and act like a different person. May the Lord have a blessing to us, Reverend. Amen. Look at somebody and say, When the Spirit of the Lord Falls on, anybody. falls on anybody when the spirit of the lord, when the of the lord falls, on the falls on the strong man he be a different be a, a changed person say ps yes. for the better oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, then. let's say it again when the spirit when the, spirit, the, holy spirit, the holy spirit some call the holy ghost when the Holy Spirit, the representative of God, when he, the Holy Spirit, falls on anyone, engulfs them, surrounds them, endudes them, imbues them, clothes them, baptizes them, surrounds them, gets all on them. They will wind up a different person, a better person. Amen. So clap your hands and say yes. If I was going to give a testimony, I just felt led to say that if I had to give a testimony about what Jesus means to others, to the artists, Jesus Christ is the one altogether lovely. To the architect, he is the chief cornerstone. To the baker, he is the living bread. To the banker, he is the hidden treasure. To the biologist, he is the life. To the builder, he is the sure foundation. To the doctor, he is the great physician. To the educator, he is the master teacher. Yes. To the farmer, he is the sower and the lord of the harvest. Yes. To the florist, he is the rose of Sharon yes. and the lily of the valley. Yes. To the geologist, he is the rock of ages. Yes. To the horticulturist, he is the true vine. Yes. To the judge, he is the righteous judge of all mankind. Yes. To the juror, he is the faithful and true witness. To the jeweler, he is the pearl of great price. To the lawyer, he is the counselor and the law giver. To the newspaper reporter, he is the good news. To the philanthropist, he is the unspeakable gift. To the philosopher, he is the wisdom of God. To the preacher, he is the word of God. To the sculptor, he is the living stone. To the servant, he is the good master. To the statesman, he is the Lord of all nations. To the student, he is the living truth. To the theologian, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. To the sinner, he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. To the Christian, he is the son of the living God the Savior. 
Someone clap your hands, say, he's my savior. Uh, we're not going to be up here long. We hope we have enough on the video to finish uh, the tape. But the scripture talks here about the fact that if we're going to change for the better, that the spirit of the Lord must fall on us. Now in the Old Testament, the Holy Ghost fell on certain people. People that were chosen by God to do a special work. They were not chosen because they were necessarily, when in fact they were not chosen because they were holy or righteous. Not all the time that we hear of Noah and of Job, but after those two we don't hear of any resume that says that they were perfect and upright and holy before the Lord. Only those two. So God often picked someone to do a job. Him being the master of the universe and the controller of the universe, there are various people and all of them don't have to be in church. But God has designated certain people to do certain things. Some are in entertainment because it's a gift to make people smile. To make people have laughter. They are responsible to God. He gave them that gift. Uh, the, you don't go to a school. You might go to school, they say, to go to clown school, but these comedians that you see on TV, they didn't go to school. They just, in probably in high school and in grade school, just would just stand up and be funny Amen. and take the class out of control. Amen. And they learn to, the Lord bless them to be on TV. Now, they have to answer to God for the obscenities and the vulgarities and the curse words and the nasty words that they say Amen. because we have people like Bill Cosby that does not rely on that Amen. and he still is a multi-millionaire able to give schools like Spelman like $30,000 that just at one time I mean 30, or 30, what, 30 million excuse me 30 million dollars at one time Amen. so that is success and he did it without cursing and without talking under the women's dress and about all that, you know, we ain't going to even give the initial that great language. Now, I'm trying to get us to see that God, if you're going to be whoever you are, our humanity demands we're going to work for the Lord, we have to have an anointing. Amen. God has to get hold of us so he can get hold of our gifts. And it's uh, tragic to me that people in God's house do not realize that it's not enough just to learn notes and to learn movements and to learn protocol and to learn ecclesiastical uh, movements and to learn uh, how to preach and how to be a deacon and how to be usher and how to sing and don't realize that it's only effective if we have had a change of heart. You're not singing just to entertain somebody. You're not singing just to get on the Bobby Jones show. You're not singing just to win a Pillsbury $2,000 award or McDonald's $5,000 award. You're not singing to make the people get up and clap and shout. You're not supposed to be preaching just to see if you can kill the house. See if you can so preach and so reach uh, and so magnetize the people that they can't help from the flavor of your voice and the way you the way you present it uh, in such a dramatic, theological, hermeneutical, ecclesiastical way that they can't help but throw their wigs and shout for joy. It's only effective when the spirit of the Lord gets hold of the worker, and then that spirit of the Lord gets on the other ones. Uh, it's not just for us to be in a spotlight. It's not for us just to show off. It's not for us just to see, look what God has given us because God did not give it to us just for us. Now, here was King Saul who was not a good man. Uh, he was picked by the people. He was picked against the perfect will of God. They said, we want to be like other people. When have you heard that? Uh, leaders hear that. We want to be like other people. And I'm talking about, you know, the effectiveness and the power of a man. Amen. 
And I want you to see how this here ungodly man, but he was no worse than the other people of his generation, but the fact that the people decided they wanted a king. And Samuel the prophet who God had anointed since he was a little boy, who God had called since he was a little boy, his instruction was, I do, I am upset at them because they decided that they want to fire me. Uh, I don't, they don't understand me. Uh, I've been leading them all this time. I'm the one that came down and parted the Red Sea. I'm the one that brought water out of that rock. And uh, I'm the one that led them, gave them power to cross the Jordan River and to have these here places. And now they say, where well, they want to fire old man God. They want to fire El Elyon. We want somebody. We want somebody. And they decided that the somebody they needed was the most handsome. Uh-oh. The most handsome. We want to vote. We know we're not democracy yet. That's for America in 1492 and for the Constitution when Hamilton and George Washington and all those people come along. But right now, we want to have a vote. And Samuel had to go to God, and God said, okay, it's not necessary what I want. I do not want it, but it's bad to put yourself in a position where you tell God, I ain't going to move. I ain't going to do nothing for the good of myself unless you give me what I want. Now, remember, you can't trick God, but sometimes God has to let you have what you ask for so that somebody learn you better be careful what you ask for. So somebody learn you better be careful what you insist on having that pleases your looks, that pleases your feeling, that pleases your carnal mind and your carnal flesh, especially when the worker of God, the one that's your father or your overseer or, or your preacher or your theologian or your prophet has said, I, I, he, though he may not say no, you already look at this face and say he's saying well and he's saying it slow and a hint to the wise ought to be sufficient and you have come in with the overriding vote because I'm going to do it anyway. If you don't marry us, I'm going to another preacher. I might even go to another church. So we, uh, uh, if you don't think that this one is all right, uh, after all you done veto these other. <laughs> uh, and so here you bring another one in another suit, looking just like on the inside, like the other one. But we have to say, well, I guess since you're going to keep on picking duds, we're going to let you pick the lesser evil and bless it at the best we can. Mm -hmm. I hope you're learning something. Uh, uh, let me depart from this script just a minute to remind you that in this lesson that the children of Israel decided we're tired right. of eating this here same bread, yes. same right. manner, yes. same bread. Now, the thing of it was that what you must realize that manna, for someone said it tastes like chicken. For someone else, they said this manna tastes like, no, they couldn't eat ham, this manna tastes like lobster. To another, they said this manna tastes like filet mignon. Uh, without the bacon strip around it. Uh, to another, they said it, oh, well, it tasted like they needed to taste. Manna, how many know the word of God, the bread, the word of God does different things for different people. Amen. For another, they're sad and it tastes like something to give them joy. For another, you know, they're depressed and it it, it, what it does for them, it brings them up, you know, do something that value them. For someone else, it brings them down, do something that value can do. So the manna, Make no mistake that the manna tasted good yeah. to everyone. The children said, mm, it tastes like Burger King. And <laughs> another child said, it tastes like McDonald's. It looked just like the other bread, but to each one, everyone was pleased with the way it tasted. They didn't grumble about it didn't taste good. They just decided that we tired. It's bad to get a good thing. Well, well, it's bad to, to get the best thing that you even could imagine you could have, and still you get tired. It's too dull. 
I need a fight. I need an argument. I need a reason to complain. It's too quiet. It's too cool. It's too, uh, I need some up. Mm, same thing. Going to church. Same song. It's something wrong. I'm uh, getting quiet. It's something wrong when amazing grace. Uh, I don't care how many times it's sung when it don't. If it did something to you when you first got saved, something is wrong if all of a sudden you tired of hearing amazing grace. Uh, it, it's because it has never lost its substance. The blood and the songs and the sermons and the word of God has never never has and never will lose its power. It never will lose its saltiness. It never will lose its flavor. It never will lose what it was designed to do. I don't know what in the is wrong with you. You try to act like because it's the same thing it don't taste good no more. You understand how you can take the same aspirin or if you're in Tylenol it's the same kind of the same aspirin. Every time you have a pain, you take the same aspirin or the same kind of. I don't understand how you come to the house of God and talk about it's the same thing. I'm tired. He preaching the same thing. We singing the same thing. We dancing the same thing. I want something different. When the best thing that ever happened to you. Something wrong with you. When vitamins help other people and used to help you, and all of a sudden because it's the same vitamin, you're looking at the bottle. I want a different vitamin. I know vitamin A helps my eyes. I know vitamin B12 helps my energy. And vitamin C. Controls infection and helps my skin. And vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin. I'm tired of taking one a day. I want four a day. Uh, and you're going to go and spend $18 for another brand of vitamins. And all you have to do is look on the label. If the nine, if the $2 one a day, the government sees that said vitamin A, five. 100 or 5,000 milligrams, the other one better say the same thing according to the government. But yet and still, because you just tired of taking the same color medicine. You know, the doctors get up on that. When you decide, you know, that this is medicine, see something in your mind a lot of times, because a lot of times you just getting medicine for your mind. And the doctor can't convince you in your mind that this me his medicine is better for you, and this is the right medicine, and your mind will accept it, and what your mind accepts, what your body accepts. I say, what your mind accepts, yeah. If you decide in your mind, if I get that fine fella, my body will feel good. If you decide if I get that there, Coca-Cola shape, my body will feel good. See, it, regardless of what it is, if your mind has decided, that's what, if you decide if I eat a lobster, how, if I can get money to eat it, what, what, red lobster, I thought it was blue lobster, red lobster, Get, the, get my color scheme right. Uh, that if it, I, I, I'm tired of eating the K&W. If I could, if I could just eat, get the money to get them all them thirty, you know, thirty-three. One time we just count thirty-two, uh, thirty, thirty shrimp. Yeah, and uh, we had to count to be sure we get there in twenty-eight and a half. Uh, and, but you, when you decide, now it's bad to pay that kind of money and decide that this is what you want, and then pay that kind of money and get it, and all of a sudden I'm like. It don't taste as good as I thought it's going to taste. I want a refund. Too late, right? But usually we decide, and if it don't taste good, we will still say it tastes like chicken because we don't want to let nobody know that I made a mistake. Yeah. I, <laughs> in our tour. What I'm trying to get us to see is that uh, we have to be careful. I'm going to get back to what I was talking about. We have to be careful what we ask the Lord for. Many times, oh Lord, I gotta stay there. My cue cards keep jumping up. I, boy, I gotta get to, I got, I don't know, I'm departing from my script. But the cue cards keep jumping. You got to decide that what the Lord, if the Lord gave it to you, it may take a little while for you to find what all the ingredients are in there. Mm. 
You got to learn to squeeze it right. You got to learn to do something with the rind. You got to learn to do something with the pup. You got to learn to do something with the juice. You got to learn to use everything. Come on here now. If you ask the Lord for something, forget about how it looks. Uh, now we're back to the text. They decided in their carnal mind. Uh, you see, the thing you must realize is that we are here. Because I don't deny that the Holy Ghost gets on some of us. But you must realize that some of us are still in the Old Testament. Amen. The Holy Ghost only got on a few workers. And even the workers, when it got off of them, they would fall into sin because the Holy Ghost had moved off of them. And some of us, the Holy Ghost, that's why I get concerned. When the Holy Ghost don't even, you don't even let it light on you. When you don't even want it on you. When you don't want it even to touch you. When you don't want to even talk about feel with it. You don't want to even have the feeling. I mean, I mean, if you don't want something, you ought not turn it down until you maybe you feel. You, you ought not look at certain cloths and say, I don't want it. Maybe you feel it and feel how velvety it feels and feel how velvety that fur you know, feels. And, and uh, you won't go on and say, well, this here is female fur. Uh, you know, this is a mink, but that's a male fur. And this here mink over here, y'all learn anything? Uh, and they came off of, you know, they have male minks. And, uh, <laughs> and they have female minks. And female mink skin is softer than male skin. Y'all know that. And so you may say, hey, I, I'm just trying to make some parable about what the Lord is showing me up. I'm not making it up as I go along. I just got, he throws it out there and it's up to me to fulfill it, <laughs> to explain. He throws it out there and it's up to me to explain what he showed me. All right, so what you need to realize is that they may say it's $5,000 for this male mink. And then you're looking at another mink and they say that's ten thousand dollars and you say what's the difference they say feel it and if it's a female mink it may look like same color same name but when you feel that yeah i mean you they can't describe you gotta feel it for yourself what i'm trying to get you to see that well, we, we, we can only tell you about how it felt when i first came out of the wilderness uh, we can only tell you how the Holy Ghost felt because for some it may feel like fire. Yeah. Shut up in my bone. For another says, I feel like a wheel is a turning. Yeah. For somebody else says they feel like something is fizzing or something is bubbling. Somebody else may say it feels like fire. Yeah. Somebody else may feel it puts pimples on me. Somebody say, us may say, I feel like crying. Somebody say, I feel like running. Somebody say, I feel like dancing. Somebody say, I just feel like sitting here wringing my hands and crying. But if you, nobody can tell you exactly how it feels until you grab hold of it and let it get hold of you. Uh, yeah, hey. You got to let him. You got to let him. You got to let him in. You at least got to let him get on you. Oh. Hey, Jesus. We don't get no father, especially to the men. You can understand. Help me, Jesus. You could you look like you could understand huh? oh, just to look at a suit uh, and say, well, I, even being cool, all I want is Hill figure or ghetto gangster clothes, yeah. rag around my head and yeah. tennis on my feet and sagging pants and big bulky. But if someone shows you a $600 suit, uh, you just need to, don't sit there and look at it on the hanger, yeah. hanging there, put it on. I mean, put on the, and, and then don't just put it on on top of your heel figure. Take off your heel figure, put on a white shirt and, 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 and a tie, and then put the pants on, and then put the shirt on, and then put some matching, you know, shoes on, the right kind of shoes, you know, and, and then walk and then spray with some something. <laughs> and walk out and see how many smiles you get instead of, the women getting over in the corner scared of you. 
just putting on the clothes will give you. Can I get an amen in here? I mean, ladies, I ought to be. When, when you put on that new dress and get your hair, don't you feel like sticking out whatever you have? Don't you feel? Don't it lift you up? Don't it make you know you're somebody? So I'm trying to get you to see that if you let yourself be clothed with the suit of God, just come on here, men, just try it on. Button it up. Zip it up. Say, I don't want this to leave me. Holy Ghost, fall all over me. I'm going to grab hold of it, throw me a garment. Then I'm going to button it up and walk around in it. Uh, I, I'm going to walk around. I, I, I ain't going to I'm Monday, I'm going to walk around with the Holy Ghost on me. together that I heard uh, someone was saying there are 600 900,000 this was a chocolate man saying there were 900 uh, a book writer saying there were nine Jamal said there 900,000 chocolate men in jail only 600,000 in college Come on here now. Uh, between when you go to the jails and look at the 14 and 15 and 16 year olds and 17 year olds in the juvenile prisons, that 90% of them are black and brown. Oh, so if the figure of 65% of the average prisons are us. And then down in the ranks, coming up to be grown, already 90% of them are us. Somebody, something needs to get hold of those young boys before the jail gets hold of them. Uh, something needs to get on them before handcuffs get put on them. Something needs to get on them before bandanas get around their head. Hey, something needs. Uh, somebody, somebody, somebody need to be able to grab them and shake them, break them, make them. He the Holy Ghost. So when it comes to the house, somebody that can't be carried to court will grab them, shake them, break them, make them, mold them, hey, and they'll be glad about it. Because he the Holy Ghost. He the Holy Ghost. He the Holy Ghost. He, not it, he the Holy Ghost. That's his job. Yes. I know it'll work because it changed me. Yes. No, we may not claim that we had to be changed from doing all those things, but I know one thing about it. If the Holy Ghost hadn't got hold of me when I was 11 years old, I would have more to confess than some of y'all bragging about what you used to do. It's good to know that you're a young fool and somebody don't change you. It's good to know that listen to mom and dad and listen to church, but if something don't get hold of you, you're going to be just like the ghetto. You're going to be just like the boys in the hood or the girls in the bush. Ah, oh, Jesus. Give me strength. 
Help me, Jesus. Ah. Mm. It's something to know that some things, if the Holy Ghost, if the church crowd, I uh, often tell young people, they say many times, uh, I don't want to be like my mama. I don't want to be like my daddy. I mean, sometimes the daddy, we ain't talking about the daddy in church. Sometimes the daddy may not even be in town or may not even be in the world. He may have never owned them, but they made up their mind that there's some inclinations. Uh, there's some study, and I believe my mama when she said you just like your daddy. I feel mean like she said my daddy was. I feel like hitting my mama or hitting my girlfriend called my daddy. His genes, uh, his chromosomes, must, it must be in me. He, he, when he put me in here, uh, he, he said I want to be, he said what's my name? And he popped my mama on the behind while he was putting me in there. He was abusing her in the name of love. Come on, let's be real in here. And she took it because that's the way it's supposed to be. Uh -huh. Act like you're a mule. Amen. Telling you to put it up and then same time spanking it away. Amen. Call this up. Make it. So you were born in abuse. Amen. And you feel anger and hate. Amen. Your mama, I'm talking to somebody, don't you know. This is the why that some men are so angry and so mean. It's in the genes. I'm not talking about the one with a name on them, but they got a gene in them that's not made of cloth. They have a gene, a chromosome that's in there, have a sin chromosome, and the heredity factors and the environmental factors and the training of the get to what they saw and what they were raised in compounded it and made them double. Feel like they have a just reason. And only the Holy Ghost. He, the Holy Ghost. The Bible teaches us that the Holy Ghost contains the mind of Christ. If we could get a different mind, if a pig could get a different mind, it may still have four legs and be pink. And look just like a pig, but if a pig's mind could be transplanted, to a mind of a sheep. If we could put a, pig, a sheep brain in a pig's body, in his head, I guarantee you, even though he looks like a pig and snorts like a pig, he would not want to eat slop because his mind, he's had a mind change. And I guarantee at the while, even though he still got a snout and still look like a pig, at the while, instead of saying oink, oink, he'd be saying bad, bad. He would soon turn up and know this slop because his mind, he's had a mind change. He would look at the slop and say, it might be all around me, but I don't even want slop. He may make up his mind, I don't want it, and I'll die before I taste that mess. He may sitting in the corner, you wondering why he's dying, because he had a mind change. I guarantee you, when you let he, the Holy Ghost, it always starts here. Yes. Getting on you is just Old Testament. It was promised to us when Jesus came, I'm going to take it a step farther. Amen. I came to let you know that I am the Alpha and Omega. Yes. I'm the one that started Genesis before it was the beginning. Amen. And I'm the one that has written Revelation before John writes it. And so I am finishing up what God started. He, the Holy Ghost, not only going to get on you, if you hunger and thirst, you shall be filled. And when you be filled with you can't help but express yourself. 
You can't help but be different. Now let me just tell you, <laughs> run out of energy. If Saul, mean man, not if you follow the story, Samuel told him that this was that, that it happened all night long. He said, "I'm going to anoint you to be king." But you need the Holy Ghost on you. And so when he anointed him, he said, now you got to get in a place. Amen. Notice Samuel did not lay hands on him. And the pouring of the olive oil that ran down from his head and met under his chin around the garment did that, though it represented the Holy Ghost. Samuel let him know and let us know that you got to go be around people who have walked and talked in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You've got to find people who have been in the school of the prophets, yeah. who have spent days and nights talking with someone who has talked with God, or being schooled in knowledge of the scripture. See, that's what some of you try to get. You think that you can just get filled with the Holy Ghost and do these wondrous and marvelous things, but being filled with the Holy Ghost and casting out demons, laying hands on the sick. He first told that to the apostles who had been trained for three and a half years. You better know what you're doing. Amen. Just because you filled with the Holy Ghost. That's it. No, amen. And as you get filled with the Holy Ghost, you still need to come to church and learn how to avoid. Amen. You need to learn how to eat right. Yes. You need to learn how to guide your thinking. You need to learn how to stay away from certain places. You need to know how to talk to the devil. You need to know how to talk to the enemy in a me. But it ain't going to work by itself. But when the Holy Ghost gets on you, tell him, come on in. When he gets on you, say, stay with me. Walk with me. Talk with me. Infiltrate me. Yeah. Do a spiritual osmosis. Stay on me. Yeah. Oh, Lord. And they tell me that if you want to start smoking, I'm, I ain't not advertising this, you get a patch. And what's so bad about it is that it's nothing but the same nicotine that's in the cigarette Amen. being put on your skin so that forever you're receiving nicotine without smoking. Amen. And some people get addicted to the patch because the reason they're addicted to the cigarettes is because of the nicotine. But they claim that you can put it on less and less and get weaned off it. Right. What I'm trying to get you to say that if a medical patch can be put on us, on us, and by being on us and staying on us, it will get all through our bodies and finally even get through to our mind so that our mind tastes the nicotine, y'all in here, man. Without going through the tongue, get through our skin. The Holy Ghost. I'm advertising for somebody. He the Holy Ghost. He the Holy Ghost. Getting on you and you giving him permission to get in you gradually and little by little, you shall be filled. Oh, Lord. Oh, I'm tired because I'm old. Y'all, y'all tired because y'all listening, huh? Clammed up on me. Uh, it's bad that black preachers had to be so vigorous or else they don't think they're throwing down. Amen. They get cool on it if he ain't really. Come on Amen. here now. Saul, this man who had a bad heart. Now, the reason that we need to get the Holy Ghost on us because it was later to be seen that Saul had a heart of disobedience. Amen. Up to this year time, it looked like he's taller than any of the others. He's tall, dork, and handsome. He looks like that he's a bag of potato chips and some more. He looked like he's a bag of potato chips and the dip and the steak that goes with it and the ham and the eggs. Yeah. He, he's, 
He's the cat's meow and the dog's bark. He's the cat's meow and the dog's bow wow. He, 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 he. Um, when we go into battle, just when they look and see that taller than any of us with this big spear and us behind, all we do is put him out in front and the enemy going to flee because they mm. Now, the Holy Ghost, when he went around people who had been in constant contact with the Lord, with the Holy Ghost, they were coming down and they were singing. I'm trying to get you to see the power of when you get through singing up here, you still have a song in your heart. If anybody ought to have, or anybody ought to go around all the week long humming a tune. If anybody ought to go around all the week long on your job at school at play. If anybody ought to be up in the car just bouncing and ain't bouncing to something, but bouncing to her. Even the radio don't be on. You can, over my head, I hear music in there. When someone come to you and say, what you up about? I say, honey, what you listening? No, I ain't listening. I, 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 I'm, over my head, I hear music. I'm listening to my choir song. I'm listening to a religious song. I mean, it, it's amazing how that we can say we're saved and don't respond to music anymore, but we say, and then when the other music come on, we find, catch ourselves patting our foot, sitting in our seat, booging our bottoms, unconscious. Come on here. If the Holy Ghost just gets on you, someone say, he abides, he abides. with me forever. He will abide as long as you let him. Even when you let him in, he might not leave you just like that, but you can make him go sit in the corner and be grieved. The Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Ghost. The, you can hurt the Holy Ghost feelings. Okay. Holy Ghost said, don't do that. Yeah. You don't care what the Holy Ghost say. I want to do that anyway. One more time. I'm young, single, I'm married, and he ain't doing me right now. I'm, yeah, she ain't, you know, uh, the Lord understands, and the Holy Ghost will go in the corner, and the Holy Ghost is connected to your spirit, and after you do your little do, and get your little stimulus, and your little kicks, and your little, I ain't gonna say orgasm, whatever you get, because the Holy Ghost has gone to the corner, and sat down, and still sitting there, weeping and crying, then when you come to church, you wonder why. Now, I'm going to tell you, I know what's wrong with some of y'all. Because you've been in the arms of your mm -hmm, yeah. of the world. The world has rocked you. Yeah. Not only he didn't just rock you, she didn't just rock you all night long. All during the day, the music has rocked you. Amen. All day long and all night long, in your night dreams, in your day dreams, yeah. you Oh, you, you live in the devil. You live in the world. And then, and, hey, I don't know why you wonder why it don't feel like it feels to somebody else. The Holy Ghost went and sat down. Amen. If he, the Holy Ghost, will bring you joy. Yes. If the Holy Ghost ain't going to jump up shouting in you when you done pouted, when you done doubted, when you done told him to sit the hell down. Yes. Right now, I want to do what I want to do. When you act like that, the joys of the Lord that you said you felt on Sunday wasn't good enough, wasn't better than what your eyes saw during the week. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Let, me, let, me, let me just get this here. You'll change men. You'll change the way you talk to your wives. Just as good as Saul all night long, the Holy Ghost laid him down. And he was speaking in tongues and saying prophetic. Oh, he was preaching. Now, he didn't make it. When he got up, he wasn't preaching no more. But all night long. And it was on and so strong and so real that he was tearing his clothes off. Trying to get the Holy Ghost off of him. See, that's why there's sometimes people not happy. They're battling in the spirit. Ah! Lay hands on 
hands on her and they'll stand here, you lay hand on her back all the way right. out that door. Right. Howling and screaming. They ain't have it. Right. Instead of yielding, right. they'll bend over, hold their hands up, and if don't nobody get behind, they will back all the way down that aisle and out that door and out the other door. Uh-huh, y'all don't know what I'm talking about? You get like, we don't know what we're doing. We know when you are accepting. Now, I got to close. I need to just say this here. Men need to change the way they perceive themselves. We need to stop perceiving ourselves as just brawn, football hooks, basketball hooks, because one of the greatest basketball players is probably at this time retired at the age of 40. I just said that just a few minutes. You know. And I think that this time he finally made up his mind. Now look at here. When the good health is in, less action, it won't be nothing but to look at when he's 80 years old and see him around, right? Now, he's got more going on. Magic Johnson had to come out with his brawn, his big healthy self because of HIV and then it age. And the miraculous part was that uh, him and his wife prayed and the doctor said they don't see no more viruses in him, but still because he was at that age and had been out. And when Magic and, and uh, Jordan go to schools, they do not go there to see if they can get some more basketball players. Amen. Go let them know, don't look at me because all of y'all cannot be basketball players. Amen. Do you notice that there's only one Michael Jordan around, that there's only one Magic there? Come on here now. Some of them that's in high school were just as good, you know. Some of them, Michael Jordan has, I mean, I believe in North Carolina has a high school, you know, uh, something to do, you know. He was a hero then. But it, it, count the heroes in the various schools. It's easier to be. You have more doors open as a black person. I'm not, not talking to the men, but as a black person to be a black physicist, you'll have more doors open, more money ready to send you to school, and more scouts going on trying to get some physicists, and they need them so bad, they don't care what color skin they are. And if you don't step up to the bat, they're going to get all the Mexicans and the Hispanic and the Asian, and we'll still be crying if we got left out because you won't step up to the door. And Nobel Prizes are a million dollars. There are more scholarships open for you to be a scientist. There are more scholarships open for you to be a black school teacher. There are more scholarships, there are more doors open for black men to be school teachers. Because all along, in case you didn't know it, please hear from me. They've been knowing in the school system for years and years that they need some men in the system starting at the first grade. This has been in the school system. When they sit down and say, what's wrong with the school system? Then everyone's about to get to the newspaper. We was in the school system. And I knew before I got in there. There's a great demand, especially in the high school, but they would like to have men teach. Not, I mean, they're putting out the women, putting down the women, but it takes, these days, it takes a strong man with the Holy Ghost on him to be able to take it and not be stressed out. See, these teachers, they can't take it. That's right. And I went back to the school system, the sub. One thing I would not do, I taught 10 years. One thing I would not do, I would not do go to what they call normal. Uh-uh, no. Wouldn't it be easier? No, not for me. Because them jokers that did not have no Compound did not have no ABCs and BEDs and ADHDs and didn't have no reason to be nervous or autistic or behavior or emotionally handicapped. And they're going to sit at me and say, we don't have no ABCs on you and you can't learn no ABC because you're so 
bad and so rebellion trying to show me something, I'd be done. I'd be done beat the Holy Ghost chain because I told when I was in the school system that look at here, I'm not going to get no headaches. I am not going because I had the Holy Ghost with me. They ain't going to stress me out. I just reading this in this week's paper. This teacher, did y'all see the article in one of how, how was teachers? Did y'all anybody see that? And this teacher said, they told the one teacher said, as soon as I get it, I rush out of my classroom, bang the door, turn out the lights, and rush to the massage parlor and listen to the wind chimes and all, and just get all this. You know. Oh boy, she got to spend the hard earned money to pay somebody to rub her down so she can go back to school the next day. But you know how I survived? First of all, I, I told the Lord gave me that job. And I went to school with the Holy Ghost on me. And in case I didn't have every Sunday that I came, I, and I, I'm still that way. And you got to learn, you'll make it better. I don't care what you're doing or not doing. The week will go better when you get a good dose of the Holy Ghost on you. And again, I want to rely on the fact that if a mean man like King Saul, could be changed for just a night. One hour today, the same hour going to come around tomorrow. If the Holy Ghost can make your mind stop turning around, if the Holy Ghost can in here can make your mind stop churning and burning and twisting and being spaghetti, if the Holy Ghost can clear up your mind just on one song or one testimony or one sermon. If the Holy Ghost, I understand why some people go to sleep because they get so peaceful and he, the Holy Ghost do that. He, Holy God, I say, the Holy Ghost, you worked against me. You say you peace, you done made them so peaceful that you putting them to sleep. Mm -hmm. I mean, you should come to church and leave out of here. I don't care what hell is going on. They all be surprised that you come from church so peaceful. I don't care how discouraged and what is facing you. The world all look at you and say, and when you go on your job and they talk about laying off, and you know you might get laid off, and they all up in a dither, and then, then they heard about the terrorists, and you go there. Because in your heart, when peace, like a river, flows over my soul, and even though death come and take me out, it's well, it's well. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me, and the world didn't take it away. Now, I hope I'm satisfying the video camera, but y'all closing up on me.